So today we're taking a look at a ship by Futon Torpedo with an F. Is it like a torpedo futon being fired out of a torpedo tube? But like, pew! Fear me. I will fire a couch bed thing at you. Enjoy my motion graphic work. Hello fellow Novians, my name is Rob and welcome to another episode in the ship review series. Today we are looking at the uh, Amar Warp Shuttle by Futon Torpedo. This is a pretty cool looking uh, warp shuttle with a tiny tiny interior that makes me feel like I'm stuck in a coffin and I'm going to die. <clears throat> but I don't because it's a cool ship. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start with the exterior here um, as I pull up the information um, so I can tell you all the wonderful stats and all the other things that go along with this shuttle. I will include a link in the description of course to the seller and also to the DU creators page. Um, now let's go ahead and start with the exterior right i already said that didn't i i think so um we've got some really nice lines on this thing and it looks like it should maybe fly the other way but it flies this way this is towards the forward um so it's got some interesting uh dimensions here and that's because we've got the uh warp core at the back and uh, the build takes full advantage of the uh, warp core space to have this kind of cool tail unit going on where we have our engines. What are these? Advanced military atmospherics. And we've got two space engines, which are uncommon military space engines. We've also got a few brakes here. So those are um, atmospheric mediums. And then we've got some compact aileron S's for lift and also some wing S's for lift. Um, vertical boosters on the side, um, and these tiny little, tiny little adjusters. Not extra smalls, but small, still tiny. And uh, it looks like those are in, in good positions. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see how this thing flies, because I'm sure it turns good. We've got some good adjusters back here that it will push that ship on its pivot point. But I'm wondering, like, rolling, because um, we don't have any, like, adjusters at the extremities back here. They're just in the middle. So that'll be interesting as we get this thing in the air to see how that works or if it works just fine with just these, uh, these side adjusters. All right, what else we got? We got some space brake M's. Um, we've got some more medium brakes up here and another space brake M there that kind of looks like a torpedo launcher. I kind of like it. Um, and then we've got more adjusters inside there. And a cool little cockpit uh, with a hole in the middle so you can get sucked out um, into space when the uh, you, when you transition to vacuum. I'm just joking. There's no atmosphere in this game. It's all fake. Okay, so we also have the warp core there and... Uh, That is about it. Let me um, let me pull this thing down so we can hop up on top and take a look at what's going on up there. Um, and as you notice, I am in my hangar right now just so I could get some lighting on because I didn't want to have to wait um, until it was daylight out again because uh, I missed it this morning when it was light. And uh, so I said, screw it. I'll just pull it in the hangar. And I'll throw up some lights around it. Um, and we're good to go. So on top here, we've got some more adjusters and we've got a stabilizer S um, that should help with uh, banking and such. And then right here in the middle, we've got an almost hidden elevator that takes us inside. So let's go ahead and plop down inside. Uh, if I can get on it. Nope. Uh, there we go. 
All right, inside here in this tight little coffin space, we have a couple chairs here. I don't know that I would want anyone else in here with me, um, especially if they haven't bathed in a while or something, because that would be stinky. Well, I don't know. We've got this hole in the window here, so maybe they get their stink would get sucked up. Plus, we're all wearing space helmets, so, you know, who cares? <laughs> So what do we got going on back here? We've got a uh, cable, some cables for decoration, um, which is cool. Uh, we've got the two data banks. Um, get some ones for the seat and ones for uh, damage report, which is right here on the side, um, which is showing that I need some atmospheric fuel. I shouldn't need to really refill it. Uh, we've got some clipping of the retro rock bakes into the interior here. Um, let's see. Oh, no, it's full. It's just I needed to turn the uh, the board on there. And we've got the uh, warp cell calculator over here. Uh, we've also got a atmospheric tank on that side and a space tank on that side, hidden in the voxels. Very nice how it, how it, uh, how it makes it part of the ship. I like that. They're not just hanging out. And we've got a uh, container S back here, which is... Uh, whoop, man. Container S. Um, I guess this is for... No, it says there's stuff in there. I must have the uh, container... Oh, because I'm set on materials. Don't do that. Because, uh, I mean, don't think that it's bugged all the time. Because a lot of the times when I'm not seeing stuff in my inventory, it's because I screwed up and left this thing set to something. I wish it would just... I mean, I kind of like that it saves it when you're looking up stuff. But then sometimes... Uh, you forget that you did that. Anyway, we've got uh, some very good storage for warp cells, scrap, whatever else. Um, this is not a cargo ship, so I wouldn't try to load it with, like, cargo. Um, I don't know how much this lifts. If we look at the uh, DU Creators page, it says uh, that it has about 12 kiloton kiloliters of cargo space and will lift 30 tons. So yeah, not much more than your than you want to stick in your nano pack. Um, let's see. Back to the ship itself. Uh, we've got the core right here, and we've got a seat, and we've got our all-encompassing um, emergency uh, controller that I like to see for anything that goes into space. So emergency controllers are good. Otherwise, that is the interior. We got some nice lighting, some nice uh, nice color work here with the different patterns. Um, I like it. Um, now, if I didn't say, if we go back outside, um, if you take a notice here, this is galvanized light beige steel on the top. And uh, down here, I think we have copper somewhere. There's some copper in here somewhere. Uh, right there, dark polished dark gray copper uh, and galvanized dark gray steel. So a lot of the times you hear people say, don't use steel or copper or anything else that's heavy because it's going to screw you up. Well, in something this small, it's kind of negligible, right? So you'll see when we when we pull up our uh, warp stats, this thing gets about the standard for, you know, a low weight um, warp shuttle. So in this case, we're not losing all that much in terms of uh, weight. So... Yeah, I mean, once you get into, like, mediums, some small cores, definitely medium cores, and hell, definitely large cores, if you start using steel and copper on that stuff, you're going to be uh, generating a lot of weight. Um, consider uh, my, the new ship that I'm working on over here uh, is made out of aluminum, and it still weighs, pfft, like, 10 kilotons by itself with all the components on it so if you start adding steel to that uh, we get an issue maybe on a space only ship um, but you're going to have issues getting out of atmosphere if you start doing large cores and steel um, so that said the top of the seat here and we'll do a little flight test um, actually let me get these lights out of the way before I crash into them not enough storage space oh control I there we go now it's out of there. All right. Let me pull both of these. So you don't need to be there. All right. And we'll hop back inside and take her for a test flight. Come on, build mode. Let me out of build mode. Let me out of build mode. Ah, okay. Hop it in the seat here. Let's take a look. 
I believe we are running Arch HUD. Yep, and uh, not the newest version, but uh, pretty new. Pretty new. New-ish. Because um, we've got the, uh, the fuel uh, visual indicators here instead of just having the numbers like in the older versions. Okay, so this is definitely a ship that I would fly in third person. Um, we have the view out of the front here, um, but it doesn't really give you a lot of peripheral vision. So it's not something that I would really enjoy flying from the cockpit. And that's me personally. You may like it. I know some people um, have commented that they love ships that have limited uh, visibility. Um, and if you talk to some crazy Star Citizen people who like the... Uh, the bomber they have in that game that has the limited view cockpit. They're like, why don't we have more ships like that? And I say, because I want to freaking see out of the ship. But some people like that, just not me. All right, let's get revved up here. We'll go out the front. We could pretty much climb this thing straight up. That is very nice. Very nice indeed, right? No problems with lift on this thing. And, of course, we get the usual stuttering that the game loves to do when it's loading things in. All right, so first off, let's do the usual that we do, which is the um, pan and roll. So let's go ahead and yaw to the left. And uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of time to catch up. So you generally don't want to yaw on this thing. Yaw, yaw, yaw. Now let's do a roll turn and see how that goes. Oh yeah, look at that line, see? This thing is built for for fighter jet roll turns. Fighter jet roll turns. I could do this all day. Just zoom around my base. Roll turn, roll turn, roll turn. I believe they call that banking. Um, but I'm going to call it roll turn. Um, let's do a little bot dive bombing. Okay, enough of the sound effects. <laughs> And pull up. Very nice. Very nice. No problems there. And this thing is very sexy and sleek. I like it. Um, and I like anything with an interior, even if it is tiny. So this gets my thumbs up of approval. Anyway, let's get this thing into space and see how we do. We'll just go almost straight up. I think I lost my HUD. Oh, nope. There it is. Oh, because it's set on mouse control. Ah, let's fix that. Doop and doop. There we go. All right, space engines on. And they catch us right away. So no problem with the uh, transition into uh, warp. I mean, into uh, space between space and, uh, and uh, atmosphere. No problems. No problems at all. And uh, it just picks up speed very nicely. And I bet... Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about, the rolling a little bit. You can see because we only have... And let me turn on the uh, these things here. You can see because we only have those center stabilizers in the back, when it's trying to roll, you see how those lines are all wonky in the back? Um, because it's like, ah, uh, and it does this like oblong roll. Um... And you can kind of see if you watch uh, Bay here. Yeah, we get this kind of oblong roll going on. Um, but, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It's not, it doesn't affect the ship's handling at all. You saw that I was able to do some nice roll turns, um, some good banking maneuvers, all that stuff. Uh, just fine. So, in a warp shuttle... That design works just fine. In something larger, I'd like to see what happens. Um, especially when you're trying to like uh, do some uh, some some uh, what do you call it? Like generalized maneuvers or, or detailed maneuvers, I guess. Uh, but in this thing, it's just fine. And look at this: we're already up to almost ten thousand kilometers per hour. And. Uh, yeah, that is very nice. I love steel. Like, I wish you could get this look with other 
materials because I would totally make a ship entirely out of steel if I could. Um, if it wasn't just going to weigh like a million pounds. Pounds? Tons? I don't know. Um, but accents are usually fine. Accents are usually negligible. But you don't want to do like an entire hull out of it unless you're actually building a PvP ship. All right, let's see how fast she slows down. Uh, yeah, just over 100 kilometers uh, a second. So not bad, not bad at all. And if I give her a little uh, thrust here to kind of do a turn and burn... Uh, we slow down even faster. So in general use of this thing, right, you wouldn't be like doing that. Um, I guess you'd slow down as you got closer to the planet and things like that, but otherwise uh, not bad at all. And I notice that the brake toggle is engaged, so let me turn that off before I accidentally crash this thing into the ground. Uh, view settings, brake toggle default. There we go. And uh, Photon, if you're watching this, I'm sorry if I forget to turn it back on, if that's the way you like to fly this thing. Sorry, I just don't want to crash this thing into the ground and have to repair the whole thing for you. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and look at the warp cell costs. So if we look at system, let's see, to Mattis, and the best I have seen is two to Mattis, and sure enough, we get two. So down here, you can see it is two warp cells, two Mattis. We have 41 warp cells on board and two to get to Mattis. So very good on that. And generally for Ion, we want to see about an eight. And that's really the lowest I've seen with a, uh, with a voxelized ship. Now, I don't know how low you could get if you just slapped like an engine on a container and a seat. Um, and then just slingshotted it into orbit or something. I'm sure you could do some crazy warp cell calculations. Um, but let's see. The eight warp cells to Ion. Uh, let's check some other planets like Sinan. Seven. Very nice. Sikari, we get six. Nice. Talami, we get four. Very nice. And uh, Lacobis, we get eight. So, yeah. Very good on warp cells. This thing will get you all over the place for a low, low warp cell cost. And that is definitely good. Let me set my uh, map back to the uh, Camara headquarters here. Set destination. And, uh, you know, while we're zooming, zooming here, um, I will give the usual pitch that if you are a new player and you're looking for an org, Feel free to apply to Chimera. Just hit the uh, F3 button uh, and go to uh, the little search icon here, and you can type in the name Chimera, right? Hit search. It comes up. Drop in an application. You just go in here and send application, and uh, we'll get you in. Um, we hang it pretty active on Discord and all that other stuff. If you like chatting and uh, learning how to do the game uh, with some other people, and uh, doing some mining ops and some mission ops and some other stuff. Uh, or just, you know, want to hang out while you're playing the game. Feel free to apply. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward now um, to we get to the atmospheric re-entry. And let me not go crazy with my speed here because I don't want to crash into the planet. All right, here we go back into the atmosphere. I don't think that's how the song goes. All right, we're coming in pretty hot, so let me hit the brakes here and see if we can slow down before we hit the atmosphere. I don't think we'll have any problem. We're at 20, and we're slowing down really fast. So this is a good test of braking power and not dying. Because <laughs> not dying is always fun. And then we will see how fast the uh, the wings catch. Look at that. I'm slowed down way before uh, re-entry. We went from 6,000 kilometers per hour to almost 100 kilometers per hour um, before we have even hit the uh, burn point, which is now. All right. Let's see how fast the uh, wings catch us as we hit the uh, that around 3,000. Yep. No problem. Look at that line come up, right? And I could probably just dive bomb 
uh, the base here and come in for a brake landing. Look out below. This thing looks like a torpedo. Like a cool torpedo. <laughs> oh, definitely good. Definitely good. Did a nice, uh, nice braking. I thought for a second there it was going to be too fast for the brakes to catch it or for those vertical boosters to stop me, but not at all. This thing handled that like a champ. So A1, I mean A plus for everything here. So good looking ship, good looking interior, even though it's tiny and uh, you got stinky people maybe sitting next to you. Um, but yeah, this thing is great. I love it. Um, so let's get to the information, right? As they say in French, I guess. Whoop, shuttle is uh, gonna set you about one million for a blueprint. Uh, Photon does not. Futon does not have a price listed for token, um, but I'm sure you could contact him and be like, "Hey, how much?" and uh, get a price. I mean, the market fluctuations are a little crazy now, so I understand people not listing token prices, um, especially if they have to buy the components to put them together if they're not manufacturing everything themselves. Um, you can also uh, go to the kiosk located south of IC Spaceport. I will include the position in the uh, description down there so you can head on over and pick you up one of these blueprints yourself. One million is a pretty good price for that and it shouldn't be too much uh, more to put this together. The most expensive thing is probably going to be the warp core and uh, those aren't too bad these days. Yeah, somebody in the comment section on the uh, on the DU creator says they couldn't get it in the atmosphere. Obviously, I have very limited skills, um, and I had no problem getting this thing in the atmosphere, pointing straight up. And I shouldn't have been able to get in the atmosphere because, as we know, you lose a lot of speed if you try to freaking shoot this thing out of the sky. So. If you have no skills, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but from my test, you just saw it had no problem getting up there. And if we look at my skills, my piloting skills are not that great. I have like a couple, well, I have a good amount of points in airfoil, um, but not that much in other things. Um, so, well, maybe I, I got some decent skills. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, what's the space thing? Vertical boosters. Well, I only got three in vertical booster height management and uh, space engines. Space engines. Space engines. Uh, okay. Well, I guess I have some decent skills then. I keep thinking I have like no skills in these things, but I guess I have fours and in, in the uh, important things so i guess that warm-up time might kill you if you uh if you have very limited skills so i'm a liar i guess i have decent skills man i haven't looked at my skills in like so long but i could have swore that like i only had twos in most of those things uh before i got distracted with shipbuilding and just started putting points into uh into into operations instead of shipbuilding anyway that is the review for this ship and again, this is the Amur Warp Shuttle uh, by Futon Torpedo. Um, I give it a thumbs up. Um, so yeah, run out, get one, get one. I mean, for the cost, it's not that bad, right? Um, you might have to do a little bit of searching for for the the uh, the steel uh, honeycomb, but you can head over to. Uh, honeycomb central and they sell that stuff by 100 meters squared in the dispensers um, so you should be able to just grab all the voxels that you need for this thing and uh, be able to spawn it pretty well and his prices are pretty good 
So that's it for me today. If you have a ship that you would like me to take a look at and review, I would be most happy to just hit me up on Discord and or any of the other social media things that I am on. You can check out my name in the description for all of that information. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out content creators that are small like me. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and or hit the notification button. I mean, I guess it's not and or and or or hit the notification button. I don't know. Do one or the other. Do both. I don't care. Just hit one of them. <laughs> Anyway, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the little bell icon if you want to be notified every time I drop a video. Otherwise, I will see you out there in space. The blue of space. Stay safe out.